Hey everyone, Brendan the Pelu Dude here at the Royal Tyrell Museum in Drumheller, Alberta. Um, I come here every year, every summer, and uh, this is going to be one of the last times I come annually because I will be going to the University of Alberta, U of A, to study paleontology. So I'll be living here. Um, I've been coming ever since I was two, and this is one of the main reasons why I decided to become a paleontologist and pursue that field. And every time I come, it just I'm blown away by how spectacular and amazing the specimens and the gallery is. So, in all the years, I've never made like a YouTube video or videos for social media on this, talking about it. So, I'll just consider this one the final video. Or I guess not the final video, because I will be hopefully uploading videos while I'm in university on my various different digs, and expeditions, as well as hopefully museum tours. So that was just the main entrance, one of my favorite exhibits. And they've changed this area up a lot. This is a lot newer. Um, in the past few years, this has been here. Um, they used to have Regaliceratops up on display here, and now they've got a exploding skull. So it shows all the different pieces of a theropod skull all detached. They also have a new Fossils in Focus gallery, which shows various different new specimens that they're working on, new discoveries and whatnot. And they seem to change it up every year, like very often. They just have an alligator here, or crocodilian, last time I was in the museum. And they used to have pollen here for the longest time and also a hadrosaur sticking out of a large like tumble stone in a river. Now they've got a mosasaur skull. And I really love what they've done with this area. They've got a bunch of different turtles jumbled up in one bone bed and two complete shells over here as well from that same bone bed. I believe this is from Montana, no, South Dakota. And thanks to COVID, a lot of the hands-on exhibits with turning dials and whatnot are um, not up and running. You can't move it. But they do have it on a specimen, which is nice. And they also have a lot of like two meter distance markers as well on the floor. A really great part of this section is the educational videos. They're short and simple and they explain evolution and other aspects of paleontology really well to the public. And they also have a really great animation with that. So this section is basically just talking about evolution and different structures and change through time. So they've got various different spectacular kind of setups with the evolution of horses, the evolution of humans. So usually when you look online you see a lot of those as examples and it's great to see that they're using them here. There's also the different types of sedimentary rock, which is again amazing to educate the public on the different types and what fossils you can find in them. Some trace fossils. This one's a classic. Absolutely love it. The death position. Um, very common pose to find dinosaur skeletons preserved in because when they dry up and their spinal cord stiffens, it, it reels them up into that kind of curved pose. This is also a very amazing um, display. It's got different fossils from Alberta and I think British Columbia, or just Alberta. Yeah, just Alberta. And it shows different fossils from almost every time period represented from Alberta, which is spectacular. And it really gives you a view on all the different fossils represented in the different eras and periods here in Alberta. Okay. Another classic display that they still have is the Black Beauty. They don't have the skull on display, the original fossil, but they still, again, have the entire skeleton up, which is great.
So I will be posting various other videos of um, the gallery, just very um, short ones with no audio. But this is just the longer one. So if you're watching this, be sure to check my channel if you want to see some other bits of the museum, just kind of walking around, zooming in on the different um, information pieces and whatnot. This is one of my favorite new additions to the museum besides Boreal Pota. It's a comic strip, like a very large one, showing um, the story of how this turtle skull was found, brought to the museum, and how it represents a new species. And this is great because it influences the public in a very nice way to turn in specimens and to actually um, uh, bring to light things they find instead of like keeping them away and um, whatnot. And with the whole um, uproar about the Dino Hunters show on Discovery Channel, how they sell fossils and vertebrate material and whatnot, this is very good for the public to see that, hey, it is good to show museums what you find and um, donate them or, or turn them in because science greatly benefits from these discoveries by amateurs, which is fantastic. And they've got the lab over here. Right now they're working on a triceratops skeleton. Um, this one's an ichthyosaur. Uh, the triceratops they pulled out of the handhills area. And then the ichthyosaur they've got from Peace River, Alberta. So that's part of the ribs and backbone of the ichthyosaur. And then inside this field jacket here is the triceratops. Seems like there's another bit of it back there, but I'm not sure if that's from the same specimen. No one's working right now. And I do love the um, kind of storage area like display back there. So if you haven't been to the museum in recent years, they changed the Lords of the Land exhibit to um, the grounds for discovery. So a lot of these displays follow a similar build. They're all found by like construction workers and people on the job and they describe um, the day and what happened before and during the discovery and then what this means to science. So it's a really cool format that they have these two pieces of information. It doesn't just say, oh hey, here's a hadrosaur tail. It tells you how it was found and then the significance of it, which is great. And of course, like all the displays, it includes this little information sheet on when, where, and if it's original. So this is a spectacular new exhibit. Now a lot of um, a lot of the public are kind of sad that they no longer have the Tyrannosaurus Rex and all the dinosaur skeletons up. And what they don't realize is this is way more significant to science. Um, an entire mummified dinosaur. So this is Borealopelta. It's a notosaur, and as you can see, uh, its skin is perfectly preserved on there. And I believe you can also see the pads of the feet, arms. Now it's sad that the rest of it wasn't excavated out, but it's good just to have the front half. <laughs> they actually removed the head. There's like a cast of a head that you could touch, and they got rid of that again due to COVID. But that was another fun little um, bit of, you know, hands-on with the exhibit. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not too like mad about them getting rid of um, the Lords of the Land. It was a classic exhibit, very um, retro and nostalgic, but this is definitely really great for the public and really great to show the science that's happening in the field to give those like construction workers that, um, that what's the word I'm looking for? Like publicity that, that, um, what's the word, what's the word? you know, like, recognize, recognition, there we go, the recognition they need. So um, here's a Mosasaur skeleton. So as you guys may know, they can be found on Vancouver Island in BC, as well as here in Alberta, as the Bear Paw Sea cut through the center of North America. And they've got a very beautiful illustration on the back showing the size. What's cool about this specimen is there's an embedded tooth from another Mosasaur in the lower jaw, which is pretty interesting to see that they would fight each other. And then they've got other smaller specimens, 
from marine rock of different ages as well. Love what they've done with the big metal rods showing what the dinosaur's body would have looked like, the rest of it, if they had it. They've also got it with other specimens in this gallery specifically. And then some really cute illustrations of what's going on in the field. They also have it with the Boreal Pelta over here. And then a nice write up on it. Again, I believe I made a separate video on this guy, so if you guys want to read all those captions, you can take a look at it when I post it. Now with notosaurs, what's distinct about them, sets them apart from like ankylosaurus and other ankylosaurs, is they have large plates and spines sticking out the side of their neck and shoulders to help ward off predators. And if you look, I know this isn't complete, but the tip of the tail does not have a club, and that's what defines um, notosaurs mostly from other ankylosaurs. So no club tail. Uh. Got a cute footprint display lighting up the theropod trackways in there. So this is a pretty cool transition with illustrations. Let's see, Illustrator Donna. And they're very spectacular. They're such well done, and I love the type of artwork style she does with the dots and the lines. It really highlights a lot of the details in the specimens. And there's various different skulls, not just from Alberta, like there's Sinraptor, um, some different crocodiles, frogs, etc., mosasaurs, marine reptiles, and then at the end here they've got some uh, theropod jaws, like Albertosaurus, Despedosaurus, and then they've got a Gorgosaurus skull right here. Very beautiful illustration. Now another classic feature of the museum is the uh, time rings. I don't know if they've got a specific name, but whenever going into a different time period in the museum, or not time period, uh, Precambrian, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, or Cenozoic, it shows you this ring with the different periods inside, and it gives you some information on the time. So they've got this interesting kind of time vortex that like sucks you through to the ancient past. I really love it. As a kid I would have so much fun running up here and pretending that I was time traveling back to the Precambrian and then onwards. So it's a very fun area to the museum. Even if it doesn't include a lot of specimens or fossils, it still gives you that feel. And I love the bubble wall. Oh my goodness. Okay, so here we got the Paleozoic. And another cool thing is you get to take a look at the Cretaceous and Jurassic Gallery down there. All the beautiful skeletons, the huge Tyrannosaurus Rex. Absolutely monstrous. And they've got mirrors on the, the ocean display. So inside there, that mirror wall, They've got an undersea bear paw um, sea kind of display, which is really nice. So let's take a look down here because thanks to COVID, we've got um, five per five people per um, area in the Burgess Shale room, which is like by far my favorite display in the entire museum. One of the main reasons why I love the Burgess Shale so much is thanks to that display. Like, without the Terrell showing how amazing the creatures are from that time period, I probably wouldn't be as into it as I am. So we've got a lot of the skeletons displayed here. Weird thing is, oh, I can't recall, Parasaurolophus. There seems to be no Parasaurolophus skeleton. I may be wrong. They've got so many different hadrosaurs, but no para. It's a Lambiosaurus back there. So let's take a look at the Jurassic area. 
Look at how long Allosaurus's tail is. Absolutely. Just so beautiful. The pose they've got and just the amount of action with this scene is fantastic. And I love the ancient murals. They're just classics. Blast from the past. So, like, they're very outdated, of course, but they show what it was like to walk through a museum back in the day. Like, a lot of these are from the original museum, and I find that fantastic. I hope they don't update a lot of the poses or the mural, because I think it would lose its feel or touch. Just the classicness, the nostalgia. I mean, I wouldn't be mad if they did, but I absolutely love it. Okay, and they've also got a geological time scale here. So let's take a walk to the Burger Shale. Got this cute video that plays every single year, talking about the different creatures, how the fossils are formed, and why they're important. And then this great scale of Burger Shale creatures. Almost every single one, except for a lot of the newer ones that were discovered, but it shows the great diversity of creatures, the sponges, the arthropods, the worms, and the size compared to each other. Great addition. It's nice to see that, like, a museum besides the ROM showing off the importance of the Burgess Show. Again, it would be nice to see um, a museum in BC do that, as the fossil site is in BC, but we don't really have any museums large enough or grand enough to display them. The RBC doesn't even have a, a sufficient fossil um, display for what BC has in total. So you can't really see much. Um, photos and like videos in here don't really work well. But hopefully, if we stay till the end of the speech, we should be able to see the um, the diorama for what it is. So these are fantastically made specimens, or not specimens, models. So, of course, they're larger than what they're supposed to be, but they're extremely detailed. I will be publishing a video of, oh, here we go, a video of um, the, the lady's speech on the description of what's going on. But let's quickly look at everything before it disappears into the darkness again. So we've got various different sponges, Sydney down there, and then of course the monstrous Anomalocaris in the center, showing off its large size compared to everything else at the time. Oh, and we went dark again. Oh, there we go. Welcome to a world that this is by far ago, the best display the at the museum. I'm sure there's a few things that are inaccurate about it, like uh, the Noroya here are fish bodied insect head creatures when in reality we know they're more squid like and I could just spend hours and hours in here looking at all the different little models little Morella, little Aishea there's tons of different things and details to spot but yeah let's continue on sounds like there's some people coming but yeah you have to come here to see this if um, you're planning to go out to like Canada, if you're from out of province or out of out of state, never pass up the chance to go to the uh, Royal Toronto Museum just for this display as it is. It's just breathtaking. Okay, so let's continue on. Is anyone coming? Let's spend a little more time in here, I guess. No, yeah, people are coming for sure. Okay. But yes, by far my favorite display. Mother. Oh my goodness. And then after the Burger Shell display, you come out into this like discovery hall little um, area, kind of like a workspace. And it's got some spectacular shelves with various different models, fossils, and specimens. So we've got coral and like horseshoe crabs, nautilus shells, books and whatnot. And it's great because it really shows a lot of the discoveries and what's going, what used to be going on with the Berg Show. Uh, um, they've got like a new site, the Marble Canyon site that they're working on, and the Berg Show, well, Walcott's Quarry, and I think the Mount Stephen trial bike beds are just like a tourist attraction at the moment. 
But yeah, they've got Anomalous Claws, like Tazoya Care Paste, all the old books from like Stephen J. Gould, Gold, <laughs> and um, I've actually got that book in my backpack right now, <laughs> and a few of the models and whatnot, and some old photos of some of the Burger Shale fossils. I know the ROM has um, ownership of the site, but again, it's nice to see other places displaying the significance of the Burger Shale and the fossils found there. Um, so let's take a look at the other side now. They've actually got some specimens from the Burger Shale in these cabinets. And um, they've also got some models of Luisella and Atoya. So these guys are worms of the Burger Shale. They're carnivorous, so that's those tips right there are their mouths, and they'd use those to eat smaller organisms and prey items. They've also got hair-like tentacles, or feelers, along the bases of their um, head regions, and they would use those to feel the world around them. And Luisella, this guy here in the green, was one of the largest worms of the Burger Shale. And then um, a toy up there is very common. Um, if you ever make it up to the Burger Shale site, most of the specimens, like rocks that you turn over, you'll find a toy on them. They're just um, kind of a long blob shape. But yeah, you can definitely tell what you found if you find those guys. And then a lot of other specimens are just sponges. So, um, Hazelia and whatnot. So here they've got small specimens. It's sadly not that well lit, so you can't see the specimens on the rock. But um, take my word for it, they're there. <laughs> oh no, we've got six minutes left of battery life? That's not good. We haven't even made it halfway through the museum. Okay, well, that's sad. Uh, should we go? Yeah, let's just skedaddle on to the other area real quick. Um, so we've got more specimens, we've got sponges to compare. So living specimens and then the fossil specimens. Got some lobopods like Aishea and Hallucigenia. And now you get to move on to this section here, everything after the Cambrian period. And it's really nice because they have some very stunning models and a lot of new educational pad, um, panels with like the fossils and very simple information. And then you've got extinction events. So every time you pass through an area, it'll tell you if an extinction happened, and it'll tell you what survived, what flourished, what got hit hard, and the percentage of life that went extinct. So it's a very fantastic area. So they got various different um, bony fish, armored fish, sharks, etc. And then the big man himself, Dunkleosteos. So we're gonna go through another extinction event. They've still got the classic um, kind of fish tank display of the Devonian Reef. So they've got large sharks, that guy in there, uh, various different crinoids, brachiopods, cor corals, and nautiloids. And it's absolutely fantastic. Um, there's one panel missing in the back that was missing for about two years now, and they can't really replace it because it's hard to take the top off and go in and get that because the inside will get dusty and there's just so much to it. So it's remaining, um, you know, mirrorless, which is kind of sad. And. Uh, a lot of the lighting, now originally this room was a lot darker so you could see inside the tank better, but as you can see in the video there's like glare from different uh, displays around the side, but you can still take a look inside from like your shadow and whatnot. Oh, and now we're down to three minutes of camera life, that's not good. This is a really nice addition to the museum. It's a blown glass display showing different fish, conodonts, uh, nautiloids, and I believe those are jellies. And there's also like some tetrapods over there, some amphibians and whatnot, and some arborn fish. So there's the conodonts, the little swirly dudes. You can actually find their teeth, which are really microscopic. They're absolutely tiny. Um, in a few deposits in British Columbia. And you can also take a look at all the different nautiloids, the armored fish. 
It's absolutely beautiful. I don't think we'll have time to go downstairs, but let's just take a look at the learning lounge. It's closed due to COVID, of course, because a lot of the things in here are hands-on, built for kids. So there's a lot of different games you can play. They've got a, a race, a little racetrack, actually, up here. And if you take a look, here, let's just go around. Do, 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 do. Two minutes. So we've got Albertosaurus head molds that you can stick your head in, and they've got little computer screens in there. They've got a dinosaur race, so you actually crank this, I believe, and it shows you the different speeds of dinosaurs from Alberta. They've got um, Mankylosaur, um, Strachosaurus, Para, Albertosaurus, and I think Troodon. And they've got a lot of other comparisons. Um, brain size, jaws, teeth, etc. And then a place to st st um, store your phone and charge your phone, and an eating area as well. So it's cool that they installed this kind of like halfway house in the museum for people to take a rest and eat and chill as their kids kind of play around in the bit. Okay, so with our two minutes left, I'll be ending the video. There's also dinosaur footprints down below. It's really neat. Um, I believe these are the actual trackways, not casts. And they're large theropod trackways, so like Tyrannosaur footprints, which is pretty neat. And then a very beautiful um, imagery up there. Okay, so I'm sadly gonna have to end my video. We're at one minute of battery life. Um, so I can't make it to the rest of the gallery, but thanks for watching, guys. And be sure to look out for my other videos I'll be making in the gallery as well. They're just like non-audio um, things. So again, thanks for watching. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and leave a comment on your favorite section of this museum. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.